Hi, I'm Corey Philly, and I'm the executive director of the Vancouver Fringe Festival. And this is the first day of the Vancouver Fringe Festival, September 8th, and it's running to the 18th. And uh, this is our fourth uh, podcast of all things fringy. Woo! I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and with Tooth peoples, and it is an honor to live, work, and now fringe on these territories. Uh, we are in the lovely area of the Leap Creative Studios, which is a partner this year with the Fringe. And we're here actually in the uh, gallery that's at the front of the studio because um, on September 8th, uh, the power went out. Very exciting for all of us. Also, Queen Elizabeth died. I think it's all related. Um, and so here we are talking to uh, a lovely fringe artist, a, a human being who I think you're going to have a really interesting, um, uh, like a neat, really interesting conversation with because uh, she's doing a show at the fringe, it's site specific, um, called You and Me. And uh, Janet Law, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Corey, for being here and uh, doing what you do at the fringe. It's just, it's remarkable. It's, oh. it's wonderful. That's yeah, so nice of you to say. Um, yeah. You know, I, we're going to get into your show, but, you know, I think it would be really cool. Uh, you know, throughout the Fringe, we're going to do a, a, once a day, we're going to, like, highlight an artist and just talk to them about their work. So talk to me about, uh, you're a theater artist, you've been around for a long time. I mean that in a really good way. Me too, by the way. And I'm just wondering, sort of, can you talk about, like, you know, are you from Vancouver? Where did it happen? How did you get into theater? Well, Corey, that is a very big question. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm um, a native Vancouverite. I was born here. Wow, me too. Born in the city of Vancouver, yes. And so I've always had, uh, you know, an excitement for this city. Uh, but I've always had a love of creativity and the theater. And as a kid, I would watch everything I could find. I would go to every event that I could get myself to, including... My mom always taking us to see the Queen, for sure. Oh, that wow. was always, yes. Yeah. And in fact, in the show, we actually do have a little homage to, uh, to a song by Queen. So, oh. anyways. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, always uh, was very enthusiastic about drama and always took drama straight through from the time I was young all the way through high school. And then I went to theater school a little bit later in kind of my middle 20s mm. uh, and studied with Anthony Holland and Catherine Oh, were you Kainz. at Where were you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I did my first Fringe show in 1987. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. So uh, Anthony had left uh, Studio 58 and uh, started his own theater theater company, mm -hmm. two years and one year in a company. So that was a real thrill. But I've always loved the creative process. And the creative process, I think, is why we're all here. However we produce our art, I happen to love theater, but I love all modalities of art, dance and, and visual art, as we're here in this beautiful studio. And yeah, so I could say so many things about so much about the fringe, <laughs> but one thing is, I love the fringe. Wow, that's lovely. Yes, I do. And I don't, yeah, I haven't missed a year of fringing. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. Wow. I've Let been, me just touch you. Kate, you can to touch <laughs> <laughs> And uh, And doing that first fringe show definitely really excited me even more to the importance of collaboration, the importance of being able to do the kind of work that's important to you mm -hmm, as an mm -hmm. artist, but also that hopefully will extend out and, and affect our communities at large, really, and the individual. I think so. You know, I, I, what I always have liked about the Fringe and more that um, we just had our opener last night um, and met a lot of artists that, you know, you only see on paper really ahead of time or get through um, email. And it's been really, it was really interesting to see how, uh, they, how happy they were just to be in the space again. You know, I mean, we all are, of course, because we're we're coming out of last couple of years. But it was it was it was like, oh right, everybody's taking a deep breath and moving forward and coming back to something that they really love to do. That's exactly right. They need to do it. We all need to do it. We all need that. Um, 
Another little bit that I didn't uh, talk about was that I worked in a comedy club for 16 years. Oh, which one? Yeah, Punchlines Comedy Club, oh, okay. the very first comedy club in Vancouver, actually in Western Canada. So I actually experienced a lot of really incredible talent, and it also helped my own soul at a very deep level because I think humor is one of the highest forms of creativity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so that was certainly a lot of fun and did you did you always um I, I know you're a performer were you always a writer as well I have always been a writer but a very closet writer oh. you know I think when I was really young I had um, a journal, and I think that maybe somebody read it when they weren't supposed to, so I always had this fear that someone was going to read my writing. And so uh, I did get over that, though, but yeah, writing. But certainly, I'm in the process of writing a book as well oh, wow. okay. called Resonance, which is about our connection to everything. So the idea of the play came out of initially a TED talk, hmm. but what happened was there was so much more that needed to be said about our connection to everything and so that's how the play started. So do you, yeah, I'd love to know more about that sort of more personal journey of yours because obviously something about the TED Talk resonated for you. Yes. To use your word yes. that you just used about yes. the book. Yes. Resonated for you yes. and, and what, how, what was going on in your world that you sort of, you know, or yeah, what was going on in your world when you were actually saw it and then how did that actually reflect back to you? Well, I felt like when you're just doing like 12 minutes, you can't really say a lot about what you really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanted to talk about was the relationships that we all have and couldn't really do that in a, in a 12 minute talk. But I think during this COVID time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really ignited my creativity in a really powerful way because I came out of that into a time where, of course, the whole world was shutting down in various different degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I took an online course with TJ Daw in uh, 2020. TJ. Yes, TJ, TJ. Yes, very big fringe artist. Yes, and that was in January of 2020. And oh, then wow. we shut down kind of the end of February, March, is when everything shut down and so what happened for me was it was a survival piece I think for just my own body mind spirit soul whatever um, to get through this time of just complete you know uh, disruption mm -hmm. and a reset mm -hmm. an absolute reset for the whole world right so yeah. yeah yeah and also interesting too I mean I you know as we see things sort of continue to grow and do other things and uh, now after the pandemic it's interesting to see I, I keep on thinking what's going to stick and wh you know where are people going to put their uh, you know their energy in their or how I like to say their apples where are they going to do that and are we going to see the what I think is the lessons of the last couple of years which as you note is connection yeah it is and I really feel like it has been a great opportunity for people to deep dig deep into that deep well of their own self and say, okay, what do I need to be doing? What is my purpose? What am I here to be, right? Yeah, yeah. And everybody is an artist. Everybody is creative. Everybody has a way to express that. And so um, that was the avenue that I took. And I took the level two show with him and the level three show and having a theater background and continuing to have a theater background, it was the perfect thing to write my first play. He's, he, I mean, not that you're not remarkable, but he's a remarkable human being. Like he's really sparked so many so many um, uh, performances and so many theater artists into doing their work and it's and also he just feels like you could when you talk to TJ it's just he feels it down to his toes he does. that that's part of his purpose is to do that kind of thing well and I think he has incredible energy like mm. what I mean is like his stamina like and he's very very committed to his own you know disciplines in life to make sure that he has that vital energy to do what he needs to do and what he does is he overflows and he gives that to other artists, yeah. which, you know, that in itself tells you a lot about a person. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's remarkable. I mean, he's a great talker, which is delightful. Yes. And he was he was in our second, doing our second podcast, and I was, it was so lovely just to hear him just talk about, 
like he, his philosophy and where it's come from and his journey through all this stuff and all of those things sound cliche, but when you actually talk to him, he's so vital. It's, you just listen and hear all those things. And uh, anyway, I say go back and yes. listen to the podcast. That's what I say. Yes. Um, <laughs> so can you tell me, so you and me, which is a site-specific work, which is going to be in Ron Bad, Badsworth Park, Badsworth Park. Park um, on the island, and uh, it doesn't, I mean, sadly, the, the issue uh, right now, because we don't have power, is not because you couldn't do your show, it's because uh, we couldn't sell tickets for the show, or not police it at the moment, so we hope that by 3 o'clock today, this is not going to be an issue, but... Um, but um, yeah, talk to me about it. Talk to me about the show and, and why site specific and, and, and what, why, why was that important? Well, when I first started writing the show, what was really important to me was to feel just the ground that I was standing on. And so it made total sense that if I could eventually do this show, that I would want to be doing it outside, right. that I could, could do that. But the writing of the show, and you know, it's, it's, it's you as in Y-E-W, yep. because um, so many of our medicines come from trees and come from the plant world. So how could I weave this story of my absolute gratitude for medicine that I've received after receiving uh, a medical diagnosis. And what do you do with that? Where do you go? How do you move? Who do you call into your team? What do you do? And um, so it made sense that it would be you and me because of course, I love trees. And I spent as a West Coast gal in the trees. Yeah, for sure, in right? In the trees, yeah. So, um, and there is no disconnect at all between you and me. It's like one thing, right? Yeah, you yeah. and me. So, so the process of writing it was um, a series of of stories that also came back to me around my connection to trees and my stories of trees, um, right back from my earliest memories as a as a very very young child and also the ancestry of my own family as well and their love of trees and how much time we spent just on the earth. My, my father's family, they were potato farmers oh, yeah. in southern Ontario and then they moved here, my dad did. So, so the show became not only about trees and medicine but uh, the connection of, of my ancestry as well. So I, I just touch on those points because it's only a 45 minute show. So you can't say everything and you can't do everything, but you can give that essence and that's why TJ was such a helpful piece in doing his core solo show because you could distill those little important moments that, that would have the impact that you need. Yeah, I mean, well, it's always like, I, I, you know, I, there's lots of work, ways in which people talk about human beings who do that kind of work. You know, sometimes it's outside eye, sometimes it's dramaturg, sometimes it's a really direct, like, director. Um, but you see, he's kind of a combination of all those things yes. to me, right? He kind yes. of is taking, uh, like, a really... He really looks at what you want and listens to you and then tries to help you shape it into that with obviously technique that he's developed over years and, and how you, you know, like any writer, it's always great to have somebody who has like a, not necessarily a template, but a, a, a way in which you can approach work, right? That is, that is um, able to place your, your, your work in a, in a good container for yourself, right? Yes, yes. And, and there's so many people that have come through my life as um, these important pillars. I call them touchstones, or my, you know, the touchstones that then become the milestones because of the people that were with you when that milestone happened, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So whether it's a birth, whether it's a death, whether it's a new job, whether whatever you're doing in life, there's always people around that seem to have been with you when you've been through those journeys. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think also that it's, you know, you're, you're also talking about a bit of placemaking, right? Because you're talking about, I mean, it, it's, it is very West Coast trees in general. I, it's, it's so interesting because we have such a, um, a BC has such a uh, sometimes fraught, you know, like, 
interconnection with, with nature yes. because we were such a resource town, right? We were always, my, I mean, my father was uh, worked for Canfor and worked, you know, and his and the people that were around him were in the building materials division and 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 you know McMillan Bodell, like huge, huge forest companies that that kind of made the province in a particular way at a particular time, right? And the, that idea that this resource was going to last forever, you know, and um, and that you could always uh, groom it to to do so, and and how that really proved false, of course, because you know. Um, well, for lots of reasons, but it, it just comes back to it like that kind of love of, though, is also something that was at the same time right alongside that reality of, of this very uh, specific industry. Yes, and um, that brings up, a, you know, that brings up another point of the show, too, is how do we have sustainable things put in place so that our trees can survive and our, our oceans are healthy and you know, that climate change, that there, there are solutions. In fact, I work with, uh, with Diana Beresford Kroger. She's a scientist, she's mm. a sacred scientist. Mm. She's from Ireland and she comes from the lineage of the Celtic, you know, ancestry, which is my ancestry as well. So that part is in the play as well, is mm. just my Irish connection because of course in Ireland, all the trees were decimated at one point, so then bringing those back. So the yew tree, some of them are 5,000 years old. 5,000 years old. Wow, right? So, but, you know, her bio plan is if everybody planted one tree every year for seven years, climate change would be different. Wow. Yeah, so it's a pretty That's interesting. Really interesting. It's a very interesting fact. Yeah. Well, and also kind of just, you know, kind of, what I remember, like many, many um, of my, you know, as a student, many, many people that I knew used to go and plant trees, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, companies. And I just was like, that's so, the millions and millions and millions of trees that were planted. And I always, I always think, what, did that really work? You know what I mean? I don't think so. I don't really think it actually um, uh, lessened clear cutting and things like mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. to think about the, how you as an individual can take a step Yes. To do a thing that would actually really change the world is amazing. Yeah, and that's why, you know, creativity. Yeah. Like, if we can just do one thing that brings forth more creativity in the world, that's how ideas come, that's how we get to do and create all the things that we do. Is It, it comes through sometimes a single idea, which then becomes a collaboration, like the Fringe Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think... I think of all the people, you know, who started the Fringe Festival, um, very, uh, Joanna Morata uh, emailed me, Joanna Morata is the founder yes. of the Fringe Festival, one of them, and um, uh, emailed me and just was saying, you know, very lovely things and supportive things, but I just think about how that legacy of 38 years um, mm. has sort of has sustained itself across multiple ideas of what it is and multiple people that have been involved and and how it's been shaped by the artists who have come every year, and uh, and how it's going to, you know, it's going to go through another. It's, we're going through another change right now. It's another transformation right now. Uh, but it continues to be flexible enough to do that, right? Yes, and I love that you call us artists. You know, I remember going to the opening, you know, just for all the artists to meet, and we had little name tags that said artists, and I thought, yeah. We are artists, yeah. right? And the landscape is what canvas you're creating on that day. Yeah. So whatever it is, right? And it's beautiful and it's brilliant. And sometimes there's muted colors and sometimes there's, you know, really vibrant colors in the texture of whatever it is you're doing, whether it's writing a book, whether it's making a movie, whether it's doing a fringe show you yeah. know, of yeah. your own your own writing. So so um, just, I, I do want you to pitch your show, but I also want to know, um, so what is the book about that you're writing about then? Is it an offshoot of these thoughts and ideas? It kind of is, yeah. And, and, and it's uh, about how do we vibrate in the world as, vibrate in the best term, Yes. Uh, vibrate as a conduit, a communicator, and a connector. Because hmm. those are the three C's for me that have been the touchstones and the through line of my own life. Um, I, I was born into a family that definitely were communicators, connectors, and conduits, but it's, it's 
been very creatively woven so that you can relate to how you are a communicator, a connector, and a conduit in the world. Wow. Interesting. So, yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's been a long time coming. And uh, that diagnosis 21 years ago mm. was pretty profound, but it also, you know, moved me forward to to make different decisions about just my own life. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Is that okay to talk well, about Well, you know what? I wasn't sure if I should do that because sometimes people, when they hear a certain word, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, mm -hmm. then they think that's what the show's about. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Rather it be... <laughs> Rather uh, like it's ask. about you and me. It's, right. it, it, there's a weaving of that, but it's the weaving of the people and the life story that our connection to trees is the most vital part of all of that because one of the medicines I got oh, came from the yew tree. Wow. So that's where the yew comes. Very important tree mm -hmm. for moi, mm -hmm. Janet Long. Right. Can you, okay, that's that's a great way of putting that. I Can you sort of describe to people, not necessarily what the show is, but what to expect when to come to see the show? Because it is a little site specific and do you want to say anything about like, I don't know, you know, what kind of, uh, something good, juicy bit that people would be interested in? Well, I just want you right now to think about something. Okay. I want you to take a breath. And then I want you to stop. How, con how long can you last, Corey? Hmm. Not very. Yeah. So air is pretty vital to us. So no trees, no breathe. Hmm. So that is one theme for sure. Is, is the importance and the absolute essential power of nature in our lives. Mm -hmm. And when we look at so much that's going on in the world, whether it be someone who's really struggling with um, addictions or someone who's really struggling with depression, there's so many things that nature offers us so many things and uh, I mean a walk in the forest is as good as taking uh, very strong medications for some people mm -hmm. you know it, it it calms the body so they can expect to feel that in the site specific show because first of all it's in the round because it's in a circle of trees so they will experience what it, it's like to be in a circle of caring and how that might apply to their own life hmm. because in the end, you're an actor who gets on the stage, and it's an empty space. Love Peter Brooks' book, The Empty Space. Mm -hmm. And what do you want people to experience? What do you want people to feel? How do you want to see them be affected in their own ways? That's, to me, theater. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Right, so and what can they expect? They can expect a little bit of fun. I say <laughs> poignant, poignant, and funny. There's funny bits in it, too. And some of the funny bits, uh, I think they're pretty funny because they happen to me. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So I think they can expect to experience their connection. Mm-hmm with nature. Hmm. That's beautiful. It is a very beautiful spot where you are. It is such a beautiful spot and thanks to you, Corey, if it does happen to rain in Vancouver, <laughs> which sometimes it does, we do have a plan B. So don't stop yourself coming if you wake up and you say, nope. oh, it's raining. You, you, you've got that one. No, no, we've, we've got it all covered, which is great. Yeah. And also, I understand that the windstorm that we had yesterday may be the worst weather we're going to have through the fringe. Uh, it looked like it was going to rain. I don't want to say the word. I don't want to put goat, goat nope, mouth we're on not. it. We're, yeah, cancel, cancel. Yes, yeah, but it's not going to. So no. I believe that's not going to happen yeah. anymore. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of little, there's a couple little taglines. I, I, I don't really like to use that word, but there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So one is keep yourself alive. Mm. How do you keep yourself alive? I mean fully alive every waking moment. How do you keep yourself alive? Secondly, may the forest be with you. 
<laughs> May the forest be with you, because then and only then can you really have a really incredible experience in life is when you're able to do that. So I've, I've got the buttons. So you do? Yeah, yes, I do have the buttons. I know. Didn't hey. I show up? I showed up at the fringe office, and I'm like, I just, I want to know, like, because I haven't done this in a while. Where do I put my poster? What do I do? And so... Uh, Corey so graciously accepted one of my buttons. Oh, I was I was I was wearing them for a few yes. days there until I changed something rather. Yes. I was like I get like where is that button? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah for sure. um, tell everybody when it is. So the show runs uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the eighth, ninth, and tenth at six o'clock. And next weekend, which will be the 16th, 17th, and 18th, it runs at 6 o'clock, with the exception of Saturday afternoon, which will be 3.45. So. Yeah, that's great. You know, Granville Island uh, has lots of people usually on the weekends and sometimes families, so it's kind of one of those things where people are kind of wandering around looking for things as well, so it's always good to have a, an afternoon show on the weekend. Um, if anybody's interested, you need to go to VancouverFringe.com. Just put you and me in the search yes. engine, and then you can book your tickets. It, they're there. It's $15. I mean, honestly, honestly, the best deal in town. Plus, of course, a whole bunch of other things, but I'm pumping you today. Yeah, yeah thank Jenna you Bob. so much for pumping me. And yeah. you'll actually know a little bit more about what that word means as well when you come to the show. You, you, you're using a few words that oh, you don't wow. know about the show, but you're yeah, I'm picking, you're up, picking, you're you're down, picking so up on it for sure. That's and good. when you were talking about the windstorm, you know that there was a really extensive windstorm that happened here in Vancouver that is was known as the storm of the century. So I do mention a little bit about that. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So that I'm I'm going to try to get over there to see. Well, assuming that life continues yes. forward and power continues onward. Yes. Um, uh, for the six o'clock show today. So yes. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Corey. Again, such a such a wonderful blessing to be here and thank you for all your good work that you do at the fringe and supporting artists. Ah, oh, thanks, Janet. Thank you. Thanks everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. I see know. You tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, at noon. Thanks. Okay, bye bye.